Good afternoon. The National Assembly of Wales is now in session. I'm sure members would like to join me in welcoming Michael McLaughlin, who is Speaker of the North Island Assembly, who is in the public gallery today, and I'm sure he's going to enjoy the afternoon. Right, we now move to items on the agenda, and the first item is questions to the First Minister. And question one is Gwenda Thomas. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, will you make a statement on what the Welsh Government is doing to promote gender equality in Wales' workplaces? Well, we are working to create a fairer working environment for women in Wales. We're part funding the Women Adding Value to the Economy project and Chwaratheg's Agile Nation 2, and through these tackling the issues leading to gender inequality in the workplace, including occupational segregation and unequal pay. Thank you for that, First Minister. Um, you've referred to the Agile Nation 2. Well, the Agile Nation 1 project was extremely successful in Neath Potolbot, with 166 participants gaining qualifications, 46 people entering further learning, and 13 employers achieving Exemplar Employer Award. Will you agree with me that the recently announced Agile Nation 2 project to be delivered, as you say, by Chwarae Teg between 2015 and 18, will continue this excellent work, promoting female career advancement and reducing the gender pay gap. Y yes, I do agree. Uh, the new project will support 2,750 uh, women. Uh, it will work with 400 employers to provide female career advancement and help to reduce the gender pay gap. It will focus on nine key sectors of the Welsh economy and many of these sectors that will be focused upon do experience uh, significant skills gaps and uh, also uh, witness the under-representation of women. Mohammed Ashka. Madam Presiding Officer, First Minister, although progress has been made, women still tend to work lower paid and lower skilled jobs. Schools and careers support staff must be encouraged to allow girls to consider uh, careers and study courses which are considered outside the traditional options for women. What is the Welsh Government doing to this regard, which will lead to better paid and more secure employment for women in Wales? Well, we expect careers advisors, of course, to uh, provide uh, equal advice to both boys and girls in school. I know there's been a significant increase in the number of young women, for example, who are studying engineering, uh, but also, of course, we need to make sure that there are more opportunities available for women, and Agile Nation 2 is one way of doing that. Uh, it makes perfect sense to uh, be able to encourage more women uh, in, into the workplace, at workplace and also, of course, to encourage more women to be able to uh, progress through the workplace, particularly in areas where there are skills gaps already. We cannot afford uh, to allow that talent uh, not to be utilised properly. Jocelyn Davis. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, First Minister, did you consider that the cuts to supporting people and FE funding will disproportionately uh, affect women? And the cuts, of course, to local government uh, will have a particular impact on women because they have their dominance in the uh, public sector uh, workforce. So how did um, gender equality influence which budgets took the biggest cuts? Well, we've already uh, uh, announced, of course, we're investing £10 million in Agile Nation 2. It's a substantial investment. We cannot, of course, use money that we do not have because of the cuts imposed upon us by the UK government. That may be the last time I can use that line in this chamber, <laughs> so I'm going to use it once again. Uh, we hope, of course, that the financial situation for Wales and indeed the whole of the UK will change for the better after next week. Jeff Cuthbert. Uh, Diochloth, uh, First Minister, I'm proud of this Welsh Government's record on investment in skills, and particularly our apprenticeship programme and Jobs Growth Wales. However, uh, evidence, anecdotal and otherwise, suggests that in construction which you, uh, and engineering, and you've alluded to engineering, they're still overwhelmingly male-dominated. So would you agree with me, First Minister, that we must do more work with schools, colleges, employers, training providers, and of course, girls and women to ensure that they see these industries in particular as good career paths for themselves? Yes, uh, we know there are some significant infrastructure projects in development in Wales, such as Wilver Newydd and the Swansea Tidal Lagoon. They will open up uh, new opportunities within construction and engineering, and we are working with stakeholders to uh, help to focus on activity that will encourage women to forge their careers within these sectors. As I said, it's encouraging to see that there has been an improvement in the number of young women studying engineering, and of course we need to encourage that uh, more in the future to take advantage of the opportunities that will come. Question two, Lindsay Whittle. 
Uh, will the First Minister make a statement on the impact of the preferred M4 Black Route on the future of Newport Docks, please? Yes, it's our preferred route, uh, but the M4 project will vastly improve uh, motorway capacity and resilience across uh, the south of Wales, benefiting not only the port of Newport, but also the ABP operations in Swansea, Port Talbot, Barry and Cardiff. First Minister, under your current plans for the second M4, a bridge will be built directly through the middle of Wales' busiest commercial cargo dock. It will block 58% of ships from using the North Dock, cut off 1,000 metres of high-quality quayside, take away 40 acres of potential land for future development, and even stop the larger cranes from moving around the port. Considering the obvious negative impact this would have and the cost savings of adopting the Blue Route and upgrading the existing Southern Routes, would you now admit that your current plans would cause far more harm than good? No, I know that officials have met with ABP a number of times and we continue to involve them in the project if there are ways, of course, to ensure that the bridge is of a particular height to enable the docks to carry on working as normal and that, of course, will be examined. John Griffiths. First Minister, the proposal to upgrade <coughs> the Southern Distributor Road, which passes through substantial centres of population, would greatly increase air pollution, noise and generally adversely impact on quality of life for the communities along the way. Will you agree with me that the health, well-being and quality of life of local people must be, must be at the very heart of Welsh Government decision-making on these issues? That is an important factor, of course. Uh, we know that uh, the problem isn't going, going to go away. We know that for substantial periods of time there are cars idling with their engines on on the motorway, uh, as it is at the moment, and that creates problems of itself, of course. Uh, I've looked at the Blue Route uh, myself, and one of the issues on the Blue Route is it is very, very close to people's houses, uh, and it certainly wouldn't be the case that somehow there, there would be a, a problem-free uh, Blue Route available in terms of traffic, as well as, of course, the problems of mixing local and uh, long-distance traffic along that route as uh, well. We have looked to examine, of course, the various proposals. Uh, Member will know, of course, there are still uh, processes that need to be gone through in terms of particular impact assessments, but we do know that we have to wrestle with what is fast becoming, of course, uh, a very difficult traffic problem with already a negative impact on air quality. Byron David? Also, First Minister, leading on uh, from the answer that you gave to Lindsay Whittle, <coughs> um, Newport uh, Port have said that uh, they're not for or against uh, any specific alternative proposals for the route of the new M4 relief road, but do feel strongly that all options should be fully explored before an irrevocable decision is taken on a route that could seriously harm one of the, as they say, one of Wales's most strategically important ports. Now, uh, I heard your answer too, uh, Winsy Little, but can you give an absolute assurance that you will work with ABP uh, to make sure that their concerns are taken into consideration? Absolutely, and I know, as I said, that uh, there have already been meetings uh, between officials and ABP. There is no reason why those meetings should not be able to continue in order, of course, for any concerns to be addressed. We now move to questions to the party leaders. And first this afternoon, Leader of the Opposition, Andrew Arthur. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Um, First Minister, obviously the country has been gripped recently by the campaigning around the general election, which is due to come to an end on Thursday. Uh, most of us would have seen the tablet of stone that uh, Ed Miliband stood by, the £4,000 tablet of stone uh, that he stood by on Sunday. Uh, but the issue for many voters is the difference between rhetoric and delivery. And on his tombstone, or sorry, on his stone that he stood by on Sunday, he had the issue of rent controls. He had the issue of rent controls. And your housing minister in February highlighted that rent controls reduce the incentive for landlords to invest and can therefore lead to reduction in quality housing. I think that that could give the possibly unintended consequences to the supply of the private rented properties. Obviously, your leader has said that he wants to introduce rent controls. No. Who's right, your minister or Ed Miliband? Better to have tablets of stone than a manifesto based on foundations of sand, eh? as we've seen with the, uh, with the Tories. The reality is we've had since 1999 uh, devolution, which gives us the opportunity to pursue uh, different policy agendas in different parts of the UK. Uh, as far as we are concerned, this is a devolved issue. We, uh, of course, always uh, take into account what happens elsewhere in the UK, uh, but the uh, Minister will uh, look closely at any changes elsewhere in the UK uh, in order to adapt uh, policy as to what is best for Wales. 
Hardly a ring endorsement of Ed Miliband's Tablet of Stone that had one of these key pledges as rent control. Uh, and ultimately, I'm sure people will pay a lot of attention to that tablet costing £4,000, which would hark back to the prolific spending that the last Labour government undertook uh, when they let spending run out of control. But another initiative that the Labour Party have brought forward, which again shows the difference between the rhetoric and delivery, is the holiday on stamp duty payments up to £300,000. We on these benches last year brought forward such a proposal up to £250,000 where no stamp duty would be incurred on the purchase of a property. Your benches said that this was the latest whiz. Anne Jones, the member for the Vale of Cluid, said that we were chasing headlines. Is Ed Miliband chasing headlines when he talks of bringing a holiday forward no, on stamp it, duty? Two, two things. Uh, unlike him, through his public pronouncements, I am aware of what actually is in uh, my party's uh, UK manifesto and indeed our own Welsh uh, manifesto. Uh, and he will be aware that stamp duty is not yet devolved. Uh, and when it is devolved, we will, of course, consider what is best for Wales in terms of developing policy for Wales. On two occasions, I've offered you the opportunity to endorse two key planks of what Ed Miliband has stood on at this election, rent controls and stamp duty. And on both occasions, you've chosen not to endorse either one of those policies. I'll offer you a third one, if I may, First Minister. And that was the uh, image of Ed Miliband in front of a Question Time audience last week, and indeed Owen Smith, the Shadow Secretary of State, the night after, actually saying that Labour never let spending run out of control on their watch, even though the audience pointed out that they believed, and therefore you could assume the electorate believed, that spending was running out of control under the last Labour government. Do you believe the audience and the electorate that spending was out of control under the last Labour government, or do you believe Ed and Owen? I, I don't believe uh, a party led by a man who forgets what football team he supports. That's a fundamental, uh, a fundamental problem in, the, in, in that regard, so no which, uh, which asks questions about, his, um, no about how genuine he actually is. I have to say to the leader of the uh, Welsh Conservatives, what I have had on the doorstep uh, of this election is people saying to me, begging me, in fact, to get rid of his party, talking about the bedroom tax talking about zero hours contracts, talking about low pay, talking about the fact that people feel they do not see the benefit in their pockets, talking about the fact that there were tax cuts for millionaires but not for ordinary people. That's what the people are interested in in Wales, making sure that they feel that, that working people are properly rewarded for the jobs that they do. A fair day's pay for a fair day's work. All these concepts that are alien to the party opposite, but they are nevertheless principles that the people of Britain hold dear, and it will cost them on Thursday. Wow, can you hear that? Silence. We now move to lead reply, Cymru, Liam Wood. <coughs> First Minister, last week your shadow uh, Chancellor appeared in front of a billboard with the slogan, Labour guarantee the Barnet formula. On the same day, you said in this <coughs> chamber, and I quote, Barnet can't last forever. Which is it, First Minister? Both are correct. Uh, the <laughs> pledge has been made to keep the Barnet formula for... Uh, the foreseeing period of time, but it certainly can't last forever. First Minister, you can't seriously answer that question by saying both contradictory statements are correct. I'll ask you another, I'll give you another example of your party's hypocrisy. You've said, you, you've said that Tory cuts have been damaging to Wales, yet you don't want to reverse a single Tory cut to the Welsh Government's budget. You've said that further cuts could be devastating, yet you, you've conceded that a further 2% cut, at least from your own party. Can you confirm for us, once and for all, would you say that the cuts haven't gone far enough and that you welcome a further cut to public spending in Wales? Of course I don't say the cuts haven't gone far enough. What I can say, however, is when it comes to uh, positioning, uh, we as a party have never considered a coalition for, with the Tories, unlike hers, of course. We all know. We all remember what happened in 2007, and the bulk... I know her position was different. I, I give her that. But the bulk of her party members, many of whom are sitting on the benches opposite, were perfectly prepared to consider a coalition with the Tories in 2007. And one thing I do say to the people of Wales is this. If they want to see a Labour Green speech and a Labour budget passed, you can't rely on Plaid Cymru because they have said they will not support it. You want a Labour budget, Labour government, vote Labour. Yeah. Yeah.
is all you've got, isn't it? You've got nothing positive to say at all. And that's all you want to do is misrepresent Plaid Cymru's position when I've said clearly that there is nothing that we would do to prop up a Conservative government. But you've got nothing positive to say about your own policies, have you? So you can only go negative. First Minister, if I'm wrong on the question of cuts to a future government budget, can you tell us then what additional resources you are seeking from the next Welsh, uh, Westminster government. You've made it clear you don't want to reverse a single Tory cut. Yep. You don't want a single penny added to the Welsh budget. Is it the case then that you would turn down additional resources to Wales? And if it's not the case that you would turn down additional resources for Wales, why aren't you asking for extra money? I mean, there is a certain irony, rich irony, in being accused of being negative and then listening to what the leader of Plaid Cymru just said. I mean, if, it, if it was around her neck, she'd be singing like a stone by now. The reality is, my party's made it quite clear that we will have £370 million at least extra in the Welsh budget every year, more than the, uh, the, than the Tories. A Barnet floor, we have said that. Net These pets. are all advantages to the people of Wales. We have said we would cut the bedroom tax, get rid of it completely. And unlike her party, we're in a position to actually do this for the people of Wales. Chance. And the reality is, we you all know that as far as Wales is concerned, that if the people of Wales want to see fairness, they want to see justice, they want to see opportunity, they want to have a Labour Queen speech and a Labour budget, Plaid Cymru would, would jeopardise that Labour Queen speech and that Labour budget. As the party in 2007, we're more than happy to go in with the Tories. Order. You'd let the Tories Order. back in. Well, Order. Order. She can. We're like now moving on to the Leader of the Welsh Labour Democrats, Kirsty Williams. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, as the parties set out their pledges for the NHS, what assessment have you made of the impact of these pledges on the future of Welsh Government budgets? Well, we very much welcome any uh, increase in the health budget in England that will, of course, lead to consequentials for Wales. Uh, First Minister, at the weekend, your leader set out his key commitment, and that is an NHS with time to care. Uh, would you agree with me the only way of achieving that is ensuring we have adequate numbers of nurses on our wards, as proposed in my private member's bill on safe nursing standards? Well, I, 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 we are sympathetic, of course, to the principle uh, of what the uh, leader of the Liberal Democrats is saying. Uh, my party, of course, has already said we would use the proceeds of the mansion tax to employ an extra thousand doctors, nurses, uh, occupational therapists and other health professionals, which uh, I'm sure the people of Wales would welcome. First Minister, NHS professionals in England have said that they will need an additional £8 billion a year by the end of the Parliament to sustain funding for the NHS. The Nuffield report uh, commissioned by your own government also uh, pointed to significant deficits to the Welsh NHS budget unless additional resources were uh, found. And my party committed to putting that money in. Uh, the Labour Party refuses to make commitments that would either match what is needed uh, as stated by the NHS professionals in England and it certainly doesn't match what the report commissioned for, by your government says that the Welsh NHS will need. Uh, why won't your party commit to that funding which uh, independent experts have said the Welsh NHS will need to be sustainable? I, I am perfectly confident that uh, my party, should it be in government uh, from Thursday onwards, will commit uh, the proper level of resources to the NHS and that that will be reflected in the consequential we get in Wales. What I do know is that I look forward to the day, uh, certainly on Friday, where we do not have a Secretary of State for Health in England who on the one hand pleads, bleats, bleats in fact, uh, that the NHS should not be a political football, then does exactly the same thing to the Welsh NHS. The sort of person who's a run up behind you in the school playground, hit you and run away. Uh, without being seen. That's the sort of person we're talking about. Those are the, the calibre of politicians that we have at the moment in Westminster, and that will change, we hope, on Friday. We now move back to questions on the paper. And question three is Byron Davis. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. First Minister, will you uh, outline the Welsh Government's initiatives to support businesses in South Wales West? Yes, a range of initiatives uh, which will help to create jobs and growth. They include the provision of business support through Business Wales, through ICT support and transport infrastructure improvements. Thank you for that answer, First Minister. Last year, 70 leading Welsh businesses and Chambers of Commerce jointly signed a letter to you calling to extend the Small Business Rate Relief Scheme to effectively abolish business rates on 
rateable values up to £12,000. Now, Welsh Conservatives have long called for 100% business rate relief for businesses with a rateable value up to £12,000, and, and relief tapered from 100% uh, uh, to zero for those with a rateable value of up to £15,000. This move, of course, would see 73% of businesses taken out of business rates altogether. If I understand you correctly, you did not um, reply to this letter from the 70 leading businesses. And more importantly, will you now commit to the extending of the small business rate relief scheme as we have set out on this side of the chamber? Yeah, yeah. Well, as you know, we did extend the small business rate relief scheme. Uh, we look forward, of course, to there being more money available. Uh, from next week onwards uh, and beyond in order to uh, assist small businesses in uh, Wales. Uh, but I have to say, I mean, what uh, he is outlining in terms of his party's plans do not sit uh, with his party's plans some years ago, some two or three years ago for their alternative budget, when they planned to cut spending on businesses, and particularly 30% cut in spending on job creation. Uh, he cannot have it both ways, on the one hand claiming that his party would uh, make deep cuts in Welsh public spending, while at the same time claiming there is money available to support his schemes. David Rees. Yeah, now, First Minister, businesses in Patobal have obviously claimed that they've had an impact because of the Junction 141 closure. And I know the Minister has actually provided support in that period of time to those businesses, but the decision is due shortly. Uh, will you look at the initiatives to support those businesses? Because I hope the decision is the right decision and will remain open, but they need to rebuild. Will you continue in, continuing those initiatives in Patoa, but to help those businesses and look at other alternative initiatives to support the businesses grow again? I know the Minister is very keen, of course, to assist uh, Patoa Town Centre and to assist the businesses that uh, are there. And I'm sure that the discussions uh, that have taken place up to now will continue to the future. Bethan Jenkins. Um, diolch, prif yn ei dog, um, yng Nghastell Nef, mae nifer o bobl wedi dweud wrth i, nad ydyn nhw'n mynd mewn i'r uh, tref i siopo, herwydd y ffaith uh, bod ffioed wedi uh, mynd i fyny ar gyfer parcio yn y tref. Beth ydych chi'n dweud i fusnesau bach sydd yn dioddef yn sgil y ffaith bod y cyngor tref ddim yn help i fusnesau bach yn sgil y prisiau uchel ar gyfer parcio? Well, dwi'n mynd yn y weddus o beth i'w'r prisiau ar hyn o bryd yng Nghastell Nef. Fi'n gwybod, wrth gwrs, bod uh, bron pob tre yng Nghymru yn codi uh, Tal yng nglina a pharcio, uh, ond wrth gwrs mae'n anodd dros ben i o bod beth yw enw effaith uh, o godi'r uh, tal, gynyddu'r tal hwnna ar, bys, ar fusnesau. Ni yn gwybod wrth gwrs bod yna pwysau ar fusnesau bach, nid dim ond yng nglina'r bod sy'n dy mewn i, uh, I, 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 I drefi, ond hefyd wrth gwrs y ffaith bod yn siwgymyn nhw gystadleiaeth nawr uh, gan yr archf adnadoedd, a hefyd wrth gwrs gystadleiaeth uh, ar, ar lein. Ond byddwn ni'n erfyn wrth gwrs i'r cyngor i weithio'n agos gyda busnesau, er mwyn sicrhau bod y dre yn parhau fel tre sydd yn tynnu bod mewn i siopa. Peter Black. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. First Minister, I've been contacted by a number of small businesses in my region who are concerned that despite the efforts of your government and others, um, the procurement policies of local government um, still excludes them from many contracts because those contracts are cast at too high a level for them to compete. Um, I understand you have a procurement board, but there is no um, private businesses represented on that board. It's entirely made up of public sector nominees. Can I ask you what you'll be doing to try to encourage local authorities and other public sector um, authorities to try to um, tailor their procurement um, initiatives so that local businesses are able to compete for those contracts? It, it, mixed, I think, is the, uh, the picture uh, in terms of local government and procurement. We do encourage local government, of course, to ensure that uh, where they can, uh, that their procurement policies are such that local businesses are able to compete on a level playing field and therefore retain more money in the local economy. Through our own procurement initiative, of course, we've managed to roll out uh, the, the knowledge that businesses need in terms of being able to bid. That sometimes is a problem. Uh, and also uh, the, uh, the understanding in the public sector that uh, they do not have to tailor their procurement policies uh, in such a way that small businesses and local businesses find it difficult to compete. And we've seen, of course, great improvements being made as far as Welsh Government are concerned. We would expect local authorities to follow that good example. Question for Claire Griffith. <laughs> Well, I gave pob that like that any in Hamry, and I'm Catholic. I worry the, I worry the hell guys also process similar after all. You are gave Hamry. Well, can word call the ad did go to we were digging in clear bit through the D a recht and new young or mention all our dear in Hamry and medically that can only a can board a senate the mark and we're sort of he would him remain our in a pop with a gas only he restore fracture had to go with 
yng Nghymru. Iawn newch chi ar ôl yr etholiad cyffredinol, ysgrifennu at y gwnidog perthnasol yn San Stefan, yn gofyn iddyn nhw beidio uh, um, caniatau trwyddedu pellach oherwydd mae'r egwyddor bod y mater yn mynd i gael ei ddatganoli wedi i, i dderbyn, a'r egwyddor fan hyn, wrth gwrs, nad yw i yn ddymuniad i ni weld y math yna oedd garedd yn digwydd. Cyd fyn yn hollol a hwnna a mae'n alithu'r wedi mynd yn barod i'r ysgrifennydd uh, gwladol, gwladol yn wneud y pwyntiau hynny. Jenny Rathbone. Um, I'm more interested in, in the powers, the legislative powers that might be necessary to ensure that ordinary people can generate and sell electricity. At the moment, it's in the hands of the big six and the national grid. And I wondered what conversations you might be having with the incoming government to ensure that ordinary people can actually generate their own electricity and sell it to their neighbours. I, I don't know what the incoming government will look like yet, but certainly... Uh, there will be discussions, I'm sure, with that government. But the, the point the member makes is, is a fair one, and that is how do we encourage more community projects. And Ian Vrow, of course, uh, is currently working with 53 community-led renewable energy schemes, uh, nine of which are uh, looking to be completed by the end of December 2015. Uh, that will give a total install capacity of 5.5 megawatts, and that will lever in approximately £8.72 million in private investment in turn generating £220,000 of annual income to local communities. And we want to see that built on in the years to come. Russell George. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I would be grateful <coughs> if the First Minister could outline what uh, s um, streamlined processes uh, the government does intend to use when dealing with energy projects over 50 megawatts. Well, we would see, first of all, we need to get the uh, powers devolved. That much is true. But we would, see, we would want to ensure... Uh, that the system is indeed a streamlined uh, system uh, and one where decisions are taken after consultation but uh, certainly uh, in a prompt manner. Uh, once the uh, powers are devolved, we will then of course look to see how best those powers can be utilised in words. Alan Roberts. Prwy wneud o gymryd ôl datganiad gwyl ddewi yn hollol ddistaw ynglyn a gred cenedlaethol a'r caniatad sydd yn, yn, yn dilyn o hynny. Um, a fyddwch chi'n barod i uh, agor y trafodaethwyr nhw theto efo Llywodraeth Newydd yn San Stefan i weld os dyna nhw wyddys i weld o achos mae yna lawer iawn o uh, broblem yn y gogledd ynghylch y gred cenedlaethol yn hytrach na y cynllunio yn ei hunain. Mae yna dri ffeith yn gynta pwer y dros yn ei ar, ar y tir an ail pwer ydos yn yn y môr, mwy yn holl bwysig wrth gofio'r uh, potensio sy'n gyda ni ynglyn ag yn ni o'r môr. A trydydd wrth gwrs, ie, yeah, sy'n gyrhau bod yr un pwer ydyn ni ar alban ynglyn a chaniatau um, y cysiarau cynllunio dros y uh, gryd cynedlaethol. Question five, Andrew Ardy Davis. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, what steps have been taken by the Welsh Government to improve health outcomes for patients in South Wales Central? Well, we invested an additional £295 million in 2015 to 16 for the NHS in Wales to deliver high-quality, sustainable health services. Uh, thank you for that answer, First Minister. Uh, if you look at the Cardiff and Vale NHS accounts, it shows that they had a, a deficit of 21, in excess of £21 million at the end of the last financial year. I appreciate the legislation that's gone through uh, this Assembly allows health boards to balance their budgets over a three-year period now. Uh, but given that deficit in year one uh, is substantial by any stretch of the imagination, what actions are the Welsh Government taking to work with health boards to mitigate those deficits other than to have, at the end of the period, huge cuts in provision uh, that will affect patient outcomes in Cardiff and Vale? Well, we work on a regular basis with the uh, local health boards in terms of monitoring their financial uh, outputs. Uh, it's right to say that a three-year time frame is far easier to manage than a one-year time frame in terms of, uh, of accounts. Uh, we expect those uh, local health boards, of course, to come in within uh, budget. Uh, we would hope over the next few years, of course, that we will see more money being allocated to Wales for the block grant that we can then uh, use uh, in order to deliver the, uh, the health service uh, and deliver the improvements, the continued improvements that we'll see in the future. Julie Morgan. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, will the First Minister join me in congratulating the staff from the University Hospital of Wales um, in Cardiff North, in my constituency, and the NHS Blood and Transport team for the compassionate and skilful way in which they carried out the organ donation operation on newborn baby uh, Teddy Houston, Britain's youngest ever organ donor? And will he also join me in welcoming the fact that this organ donation and the bravery of the baby's parents has inspired thousands of people across the UK to join the organ donation register since then. 
Absolutely. I'm sure I speak for all in this chamber uh, that we are full of admiration for uh, Teddy's family, uh, particularly their courage and bravery at such a very difficult time uh, for them as, as parents. Uh, and also, of course, th th their desire to be able to, to explain what they've done to encourage more people to become organ donors, and that's been successful. Uh, we know that more people, many more people, have signed up to the organ donation register. Over 15,000 is believed at the, um, at the last count. I'd also like to, like to recognise all the staff involved in uh, this unique donation, all those who cared for Teddy. Uh, and his uh, mother in UHW. I know the retrieval surgery team from Birmingham worked very hard, and of course all those involved in the donation process from NHS blood and uh, transplant. Uh, it can be very difficult, I think, for all of us uh, in this chamber to put ourselves in the position of uh, Teddy's family, but I think um, it's worth saying once again, I have written members um, should know uh, to the family uh, that uh, we are full of admiration and gratitude to the family for what they've done. Question six, Erin Jones. I wneud y prif yn eidog rhoi diweddariad ar blaen o'r ieithr llywodraeth ar gyfer hybu economi o'r gorllewin. Wnei'n bwrw mlaen, uh, ystod o blaen o'r ieithau i wella'r economi drwy wneud y mwyaf o'r pwerau dacon leig sy'n gyda ni'r hyn o bryd, er mwyn cymryd camau pell gyrchaidol i gefnogi swyddi twf ar yn garchedd y busnes. Ac, of course, mae'n cynnwys cynnig cymorth busnes trwy'r trwy busnes Cymru, cymorth uh, ynglyn a tagech, a gwelliannau i'r sylwaith trafigion. Rwy'n ni dod ni wedi clywed eisoes prynhawn yma fod uh, busnes y bach yn teimlo yn bod nhw'n cael eu cau allan o gytundebau uh, sector gyhoeddus, contractor sector gyhoeddus. Um, Cwm ni bach glynhau ffenestri yn dweud wrth e i, i bod i'n gyfan gwbl uh, amhosib iddyn nhw gystadlu bellach am gytundebau cyhoeddus, gan fod y gytundebau yn cael eu gosod ar draws a'r dyrdodau hyd yn oed yn cael eu gosod ar lefel uh, genedlaethol. Felly mae polisi cyhoeddus yn cael eu arwain gan y llywodraeth chi wedi arwain i gyfuno contractau, ond Ydych chi'n cytuno gyda fi o ran y cyfnogaeth i fusnesau lleol a busnesau bach fe fyddai gwahanu a lleihau rhai o'r contractau mawr yma o fydd i'r busnesau bach hynny. Oi beth, mi'n gwybod yn wir. A fi'n credu bod lle ma fe'n bosib fi wneud hynny, dylai mwyn agol i ystyried. Ond yn ail, wrth gwrs, bydd sy'n bwysig hefyd i bod busnesau bach yn gweithio gyda gilydd er mwyn cystadlu am y contractau. Un o pethau ffyndau sy'n fel um, cyn wynidog ameth, lle o bobl yn cystadlu i... Um, I sicrhau bod ci i dono Gymru mewn mewn i, I wasanaeth iechyd Cymru, oedd y problem ar pryd hynny oedd neb y llun neidau, oedd neb y gall, gallu delio gyda contract oedd, 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 oedd uh, y se y maint yna. Mae'n awel i newid, uh, a mae bwysig dros benedd, wrth gwrs, nid dim ond bod y contract yn cael ei dod i lawr mewn yn bosib, ond yn ail, wrth gwrs, bod bod busnesau yn gweithio gyda gilydd, er mwyn, ger mwyn sicrhau gyda gilydd bod nhw'n gallu cael y contractau hynny. Paul Davis. Uh, uh, Prif wynidog, mae awdurdod porthladd abertegleddau wedi cael hawl cynllunio am linellol i ddatblygu'r dociau yn y dref er mwyn transnewid yr economi lleol. Os dyr i'r pwysigrwydd y cynllun adfywio hwn sy'n werth rhyw 20 miliwn o bunnoedd a phwysigrwydd yr hafan i economi gorllewin Cymru, pa rôl y gall Llywodraeth Cymru i chwarae i gefnogi cynllun fel hwn ac i sicrhau bod abertegleddau yn cyrraedd uh, ei lawn potensial? Mi wedi bod yn gweithio gyda'r porthladd er mwyn sicrhau bod y, y dyblygiad hyn yn symud mlaen. Bydd y mwy o help wrth gwrs i'n gweithio bydd geni pwerau dros po, uh, porthladdoedd sy'n ddim gyda ni'n hyn o bryd, ond bydd sydd wedi cael ei gan bob uh, plaid yn y, yn y siambr hyn a hefyd yn San Stefan. Uh, Mae bod y gwaith yn bwysig dros ben, wrth gwrs, nid dim ond ynglyn a, a'r ffaith bod uh, y llongau mynd i'r iwerddon, ond yna, wrth gwrs, y potensial sy'n ynglyn a dod a cargo freit mewn i'r, i'r porthladd i hunan. So, ni wedi bod yn gweithio gyda'r porthladd a byddwn ni'n parhau i wneud hynny yn y pen draw. William Powell. First Minister, you may well be aware that following the loss of its community's first status, uh, the Penparkai Community Forum in Aberystwyth is currently seeking funding to, uh, to convert the former boxing club uh, into a community centre. And it's hoped that that will incorporate a training kitchen in partnership with colleague Keredigion, uh, space to hold training workshops, and also a community cafe. First Minister, do you agree with me that this is exactly the kind of project that merits uh, support because it fits in firstly with the Welsh Government's tackling poverty agenda, but also assists in bringing young people back into vocational education, generating skills, and also uh, producing further jobs in rural areas while boosting the local economy? Well, well the member will know that I, I can't give backing to any particular application at this stage, but he makes a powerful case 
uh, for that uh, project and what, what he has said. Of course, uh, it's clear that uh, much work has gone into the application. It's a matter now, of course, for the application to be determined uh, in the appropriate way. Question 7, Jenny Rathbone. Dear Clarid, uh, what is the Welsh Government's strategy for improving public transport connections in South East Wales? Yes, the Wales Transport Strategy sets out our approach to integrated transport, and the National Transport Plan then outlines a range of interventions and investments that we plan to make to improve transport links across Wales. Um, last week, Cardiff Council approved the, the plans <coughs> for the new BBC headquarters in Central Square, and Cardiff Council uh, has the, the plans for the new bus station also in Central Square all ready to go out to consultation so that uh, the people of Cardiff can have their say. Uh, what's the missing piece in the jigsaw are, is the plans for the metro because it would be good to, to have that integration of, of that transport um, before we start building the bus station. And I, I just wondered if you can give us some time scale on when we might know whether the metro is going ahead. Well, I understand that plans for the Central Square development will make provision for the metro. There are two things here. First of all, to ensure that the existing heavy rail corridors are protected uh, in, in terms of ensuring that what is already there, if it's felt that, that it moves then onto light rail, that those corridors are there. Secondly, of course, it's important to ensure that uh, on-street running is possible. Uh, where, the, where there are planned extensions to the metro that take it away from the existing heavy rail network. And that is something that Cardiff uh, Council, uh, I understand, are already uh, factoring into the development itself. William Graham. Uh, thanks, Presiding Officer. First Minister, one of the key factors for public transport in South East Wales will be the integration between the road and rail network, particularly for places like the Usk Valley. How will this network complement and integrate into the South Wales metro system? Well, of course, in terms of the metro itself, that's only part of the picture. The, the metro itself involves uh, building on the existing heavy rail lines and their adaptation. Uh, also, of course, looking to extend the network in the future, but also, of course, making sure that there's proper integration with bus services. Uh, and that is something that we are examining, uh, particularly in terms of, uh, of the possibilities of uh, bus rapid transit corridors and, of course, the need to, to particularly in the, the valleys, to link communities cross valley. Uh, where the, uh, the, the the rail link or the metro link uh, won't go. Uh, nevertheless, people need to travel across valley in any event. So these are all uh, factors that we're looking at uh, in terms of ensuring that the, the metro is not just a system that involves the rail uh, network uh, or rail links, but also involves proper bus integration as well. Lindsay Whittle. Uh, well, first of all, Cardiff bus is indeed an excellent service which provides uh, widespread coverage to all areas of Cardiff, something that uh, many parts uh, of the valleys often lack. Uh, but crucially, it's also a not-for-profit service run for the benefit of Cardiff citizens. Are you in favour of expanding the not-for-profit bus services throughout Wales, and would you be in favour of helping local authorities, perhaps collaborating together, to look to moving towards a Cardiff bus model? Yes, I would. I think those models need to be looked at. It'll be easier, of course, when uh, bus regulation is devolved. There are many of us in this chamber who have had, I'm sure, experience of dealing with a traffic commissioner in Birmingham. Uh, not happy experiences, I have to say, uh, particularly dealing with some um, in the past with one or two bus companies. Uh, but nevertheless, it's absolutely right that when uh, bus regulation is devolved that uh, we can then give full consideration to what the model of bus provision should be in different parts of Wales. Elena Parrott. Uh, Jill, Cardiff Council have confirmed that the bus station in Central Square will close in just 12 weeks' time on the 1st of August. And actually, according to um, a statement in the press today, they have no firm plan as to which choice of bus station will be chosen, and nor do they have any idea what interim arrangements are being made for passengers. It's absolutely critical to Cardiff bringing in visitors and investment and the success of our enterprise zone that that interchange operates effectively, not only in the future, but also in the here and now as well. Um, will you make representations to Cardiff Council to make sure that they publish their interim arrangements as soon as possible so that people can plan for the future? Well, in the early 1990s, Bridgend bus station was closed down uh, with the bankruptcy of Western Welsh. It remained closed for some years and it was a disaster for the town because nobody knew where to catch the buses. Eventually the bus station was reopened. Uh, and now everybody understands that buses leave from a particular point. I think there are lessons there for all uh, urban settlements in Wales. It is absolutely crucial that where people come to a central point by train, uh, and Cardiff has arguably more than one central point, but it does have a central station, that it is then as easy as possible for people to catch a bus from that point to go elsewhere. 
Uh, the experience that we had in Bridge End at that time was that it doesn't work uh, if people don't have one point where they can catch a bus from, or at least one point where they know they can catch a bus uh, to anywhere in that particular network from. Question eight, Kirsty Williams. Will the First Minister make a statement on education provision in Brecon and Radnorshire? Yes, pupils in rural areas like Brecon and Radnorshire should have access to a range of education <coughs> provision, the same as pupils in the rest of Wales, and consortia will support schools to improve learner outcomes, and the uh, region's challenge advisers will broker support to ensure that pupils receive the provision needed. Uh, thank you, First Minister. Uh, any right-minded person could see that Brecon High School is in a very bad state of repair and needs to be completely demolished and uh, rebuilt. Mm -hmm. Powers County Council say that Welsh Government will only find the funding for that if the project is transformational, and in their view, that means the closure of Gwynevid mm -hmm. High School. Uh, First Minister, this has set two educational communities against each other. Would you not agree uh, with me that if Brecon High School needs to be rebuilt, that, that should happen, and the pupils and teachers have a building that is fit for purpose, and it should not rely upon another community losing its school? And would you like to take the opportunity to visit Brecon High School with me for you to see firsthand the state of the buildings in which pupils and teachers are working? Yeah. Well, my understanding was that it was Powys's uh, proposal and they have indeed approved plans to consult on proposals to close Brecon High School and uh, Guernaved High School. Uh, well, <laughs> local authorities have the responsibility to uh, plan for education provision in their area. Uh, I, I, I don't know of any other authority in Wales uh, which has felt uh, that this is a problem for them. Uh, she's right about Brecon High School. I don't, I don't dispute what she has said. It is important that where new schools are built, that they are obviously able to cater for demand. We know that, but also, of course, that then that they are that, that they are up to their capacity. What I do know from experience, of course, is that quite often, where there are proposals to to close old established schools in many communities in Wales, there's great opposition to begin with. And when a brand new school is built, that opposition quite often disappears. But it is a matter for Powys. It's not a matter. We're not telling Powys what they can and cannot do. But it is up to Powys to plan for education in their area, and then, of course, bid for funds uh, if they feel it's appropriate to build a new school. Question nine, Elena Parrot. <coughs> Will the first minister <coughs> outline the next stage of the proposed South Wales Metro? Yes, uh, members will be updated on the progress uh, of the uh, Metro uh, and indeed the progress with regard to the Wales and Borders franchise, which is important in terms of the Metro's development before the summer recess. Uh, thank you, First Minister. I listened uh, with uh, interest to your answer to question <coughs> seven, where you suggested that Cardiff Council were building in space for the Metro in the Central Square redevelopment, because I have here a letter from uh, Ramesh Patel, who's the Cabinet Member for Transport from Cardiff Council in the Echo uh, today or yesterday, that says, given that the plans are insufficiently developed at this stage, we are unable to consider them in this development. Um, just um, can, obviously we're going to a period where they're going to be consulting on proposals for a new bus station and how that works in Central Square. Please can you bring forward um, the publication of your Metro proposal so that the public can see in that consultation period whether those two plans are going to fit adequately together? Well, the initial proposal of the Metro will revolve around the existing rail network rather than looking to extend it at this stage. There's work to do, for example, to look to electrify the existing rail network and that would take priority. What happens, of course, with, with um, light rail networks, um, and we see this in Manchester as, as one example, is that they fit around the city rather than the city fitting around the network. So whatever the proposal is for Central Square, unless it's physically completely uh, bounded by, uh, by buildings that doesn't allow any access, uh, then, of course, it will be possible to, to put a, a light rail line in to the uh, existing square and in then, of course, towards Central Station itself. Jeff Cuthbert? Uh, I welcome the South Wales Metro proposals. Do you agree with me, First Minister, that this will help to alleviate current overcrowding during peak times on Arriva Trains Wales services, can lead as well to a better and more efficient public transport system uh, to relieve road congestion around the Caerphilly Basin at peak times, something I experienced directly today when I went to meet the Deputy Minister for Tourism at Caerphilly Castle and finally it will also lead to quicker and easier access to major centres of employment thus enabling to spread housing developments more evenly across my constituency and particular particularly in the northern part uh, of the Rumney Valley. Well there, yeah, I agree entirely with him there are several factors here increasing capacity increasing frequency comfort of passengers as well of course so that fewer passengers have to stand 
if at all, in the future, uh, and, of course, uh, ease of extension in terms of the, uh, the way that the network could be developed in, in the future. But we do know that the existing uh, service under the Wales and Borders franchise is uh, at more than capacity at certain times of day, and that will have to be addressed as part of the Metro proposals. Uh, First Minister, <coughs> the, uh, the idea of the Metro is, is a great one in principle, but there is a growing concern uh, that the complexities of a project like this are uh, starting to prove a, a little bit too much um, for, for, for your government in developing these ideas. Transport expert Stuart Cole, uh, as you'll uh, know well, uh, believes that the timescales for delivering the Metro are unrealistic, given this continue uh, dithering over whether you're going to use light rail, trams or heavy rail. When will these key decisions be taken so that uh, Cardiff Council uh, and other local authorities can get on with factoring your decisions into their planning process? Because at the moment, the, it, it all seems to be stalling. No, I mean, as I said, members will be updated before the summer recess. There are complexities that does not undermine our ambition. For example, when it comes to light rail, nothing's devolved in terms of, uh, I think I'm right in saying, in, in terms of uh, operation of light rail. For example, if a line is to be converted from heavy rail to light rail, it's not clear to us that we have the powers at the moment to do it. So we're relying on others uh, to actually uh, do the work uh, for us. Uh, that is a complexity. Um, there are issues in terms of, of the, uh, the different requirements of signalling. Uh, there are issues in terms of ensuring that there is staffing continuity uh, on the, uh, on if light rail is, is adopted. So these are all issues that are being uh, examined at the moment. Moment. But I have to say to members that given the current state of play with regard to rail powers, not all the powers to create the metro within the hands of the Welsh Government. We don't anticipate there will be difficulties as far as the Department for Transport are concerned, are concerned, but nevertheless it's not something that's entirely within uh, our control at the moment. That said, as I said, members will be updated before the summer. There have been a number of meetings with myself, with the Minister and indeed uh, with, uh, with officials and others uh, with a view to uh, providing members with the information they need by the summer. Lindsay Whittle. Well, uh, what recent discussions have you or relevant ministers and officials had with members of the European Commission regarding the allocation of EU structural funds to the metro system, and has your current position on a second M4 affected the planned allocation of such funds? No, is the answer. Uh, there are two different pots of money, as the member knows. The, uh, the M4 would be uh, out of the uh, borrowing uh, pot that uh, we have been... Uh, or we will be given by the UK government in terms of European Commission funding. We are very actively looking at uh, European Commission funding with regard to uh, funding the Metro uh, itself. Uh, and that is uh, one of the areas that, that would make a, a significant difference to the, uh, to the Metro, examining the possibilities of European funding and, of course, then getting that funding released. It does not interfere or compete in any way with funding for the, for the uh, M4 relief road. Finally, Joyce Watson. Uh, dear, uh, Llawydd, will the First Minister make a statement on childcare provision in Mid and West Wales? Yes, ensuring access to affordable, high-quality childcare, especially for those in our most disadvantaged areas across Wales, is a priority for the Welsh Government, and our wider priorities are set out in our Early Years and Childcare Plan. Uh, thank you for that answer, Minister. Uh, despite what the Conservatives and the supporters say, childcare is not a so-called soft issue. It is central to economic progress, particularly in areas like Mid and West Wales. And childcare is a huge issue for working families. It's the difference between being able to actually go to work and to be able to afford that childcare. And uh, we all know that the Flying Start provision uh, that La Welsh Labour has uh, given to people has increased from 18,000 to 33,000 in this Assembly. Therefore, First Minister, would you like uh, to tell me uh, what difference you believe uh, that the Labour's pledge to double free childcare from 10 to 20 hours for working parents will make to families in Wales? Uh, an enormous difference. We, we, we know it's far from being a, a soft issue, as it's been put. It's uh, not by the member, as they do add. This is a fundamental economic issue. Uh, if we want to ensure that people are able to, uh, to work, then, of course, they need to be supported to, uh, to do that. And we know that increasingly people move further away from where they're from. They're away from their families. They don't have that network uh, that uh, perhaps 10 or 20 years ago was, uh, was true. And as a result of that, they have to find other ways to ensure that they can get in place proper childcare. And we want to make sure, as far as Wales is concerned, that that childcare is in place. Thank you, First Minister. I have accepted.